What do we do when we see the pages of our lives flying by? Life is like a book, isn't it? Every day, another page, another page, another page, another page. You get to the end of a certain number of pages and it changes chapters, right? Perhaps you were only just very recently um, playing in the play lot with friends, playing tag, leapfrog, on the the play lot uh, equipment, the swings and the seesaw and the and the slide. Um, maybe that just happened for you. Maybe um, you blinked your eyes and suddenly you were in school and you were going through junior high and your first black eye and your first bloody nose and your first broken heart. And then high school. And you say, okay, I'm in high school now. And you blink again and high school's over. And you've crossed the stage. Some of you went to work right away. Some of you uh, went to university. And four years of university and one, two, three, four, they go by like that fast. And then maybe you're married and maybe you have a child now or maybe you had a child and now that child grows up and you have a couple of children now they're all grown up and now you're walking and you're thinking okay uh the pages are flying pretty fast how is a christian supposed to deal with that how should how should a christian deal with this we get a a, a glimpse first thessalonians 5 paul the apostle says to the, to the church in Thessalonica, it says in a, in a segment of, of um, scripture that deals with the comportment of a Christian, how a Christian should behave. How should a Christian behave in these situations? First Thessalonians 5, beginning in verse 16, it says, Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So 16 through 18, it goes on to say other things. But for the purpose of our short video, how is a Christian supposed to deal with the pages that go flying by? Flying, 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 flying. Sometimes these changes in, in the chapter and the pages bring joy. They're good things, right? Sometimes they bring pain. Uh, and the example is, of course, uh, as you grow older, you lose uh, loved ones that are that were much older, and their last page comes. Why? Because we all have that page number one, and then we have just like every book has different number of pages. We don't know how many we get, right? So, but we do know that we will have one day a last page. How should a Christian view that? How should a Christian act and comport themselves in light of that truth and in light of that reality that we see around us? The world does it this way. They see the pages flying by and um, they want to hang on to their youth. They want to get all kinds of uh, work done. They want to they want to dye their hair. <laughs> they want to do all these things. They want to, you know, and, and they want to hang on to everything as much as they can uh, and assuage the pain, medicate the pain with uh, different things, right? Drugs, alcohol, sex, shopping, whatever, uh, entertainment. Yeah. And um, we're called to be separate from that, though, right? Holy is the word that we read in the Bible. Holy means to be separate from that. Um, I'm not saying that a Christian shouldn't dye their hair. That's not what I'm saying. If, if you want to dye your hair, go ahead. It's your business. Um, uh, you know, and that, that truly. Um, and I'm not saying don't take care of yourself. Most certainly take care of yourself. Work out. Do the things that you have to do to, to stay healthy and to feel good and to take care of your health. Most certainly. But what I'm not saying, what I am saying, though, is... We shouldn't look at the world or those pages flying by the same way that the world does. The world, somebody that doesn't know Christ 
it's almost in they can they know that that this is probably it this world is it they don't have any hope the christian of course knows that when my page the, the final page you come to the final page and that final page gets turned and there are no more pages The Christian closes their eyes here on earth and opens them up in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we're given a new book. And that book will have a page one. The only difference with this new book that you're going to receive is that it will have no end. It will be forever. And the the story is going to get better and better and better and better and no tears and no sadness and one one uh, milestone after another one wonderful thing after another will happen we'll get to know god in ways that we never thought possible and we will never exhaust the depth and the brevity the depth of his goodness and mercy and the brevity of what was this life will be a distant memory looking forward to that In the interim, though, we have pages that we're turning in this life. And we're doing it alongside people that don't know the Lord. People that are not Christian. I must pause and say, what is a Christian? Maybe you come from a Christian family. But don't you know, my dear friend, that you need to make a decision for your own future. Your own own, um, uh, eternal uh, situation needs to be handled by you alone. You need to make a a decision you need to align your belief with the following we believe christians believe that god the father sent god the son to the earth jesus is god he was a real person in history even atheists agree he was the real person there's no, there's no, there's no question. It, to say there was no Jesus, uh, if you ever hear a, a scholar say that there was no Jesus, uh, they they would get laughed out of any university. Just as just as surely as if you would say that there was no such thing as an Abraham Lincoln or or a George Washington. There is much evidence outside of the Bible for a man named Jesus who was born. Jesus and Christ wasn't his last name, right? Christ is his title. Christos means Messiah in Greek. And so, Jesus is God. How do we know that he's God? And how do we know that there's a Father, a Son, and a Holy Spirit? They're referred to very clearly in the Bible as persons with pronouns. They have he pronouns. They're known as he, capital H. I love Bibles that capitalize the pronouns of God. Love it. There are several translations that do that. Not all, several. The ones that don't do it, I still like. I'm not, I'm not that guy either. <laughs> In essence, my dear friend, what do we believe? God the Father sent God the Son to live a perfect life here on earth. He didn't sin. He didn't sin not once. Another proof that we know he's God is that he received worship. Had he just been a normal man and you receive worship, that is that is blasphemy. You cannot receive worship as a human being. When you that's the issue with with our culture. We worship icons and we worship stars and rock stars and all of this and uh, it is a dangerous, horrible addiction to to have uh, people around you uh, adoring you in that way it's not good and it's only meant for God and so um, Jesus received worship and there were several occasions wherein he was worshipped and he received it had he not just been a man he would have sinned and not been the Christ not been the Messiah but Jesus did not sin He received the worship because he is God. And so God came. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died a terrible death on the cross. He took my sin. He paid the debt for your sin and for my sin. 
he was buried and on the third day he rose again christians believe that if you don't believe that it's very clear you are not a christian you may be one culturally or you may identify as one or you call yourself one but it doesn't make you one uh, something happens when you believe that i'll tell you what happens the third person of the trinity the holy spirit comes to live within you now and now you have the help to deal with the fact that these pages are turning at a record rate and they're they're flying by and life is flying by <laughs> And uh, sometimes I was talking to a dad this weekend, this last weekend. He says, the older I get, the faster these pages are going. I said, yeah, that's so, that seems to be the, the trend. And along with that comes um, moments of pain, as I mentioned, moments of joy. This last weekend, I got to um, be at the wedding of my son. My son got married to a wonderful girl, wonderful family, and um, they asked me to lead worship. I had a moment, I had a song, I sang at the ceremony for Christ, and it was a great honor to do that, a great honor. And I was overwhelmed with joy. At the same time, I was... I was, there was a moment, there was sadness in there. And it's, it's very normal for this. Not sad that he got married. Very happy. He might be watching this. I'm not sad you got married. It's no, no, I'm so overjoyed. I, it, it's just the, the chapter changed, right? And with the chapter that changed, you look back and you, you, you think, well, uh, you know, it's not going to be the same. And no, it won't be the same. Now my son lives outside of our home. My wife and I and my children, he now will live elsewhere. And it's wonderful. This is why we, we launch and have offspring so that they become godly offspring and they go into the world and they affect, uh, they live fruitful lives for Christ. And this is why. But at the same time, the chapter changes and, and there's different, and there's now there's a new reality before us. I remember when my grandmother passed away. One of my grandmothers in particular, uh, I, it was painful when both of them passed. Uh, but the one that I'm thinking of, she, uh, I, we lived closer to her. So naturally I had more, more interaction with her over the years. But when she passed away, I knew that she, she had been sick for a very long time. And when she did pass away... I remember that that feeling it felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest and it was just painful and now the new the new chapter was going to be my life without grandma from now until my last page and so that was that's the name of that chapter it's a painful one and so my dear friend a christian endures pain has pain you're going to have moments of pain, moments of joy, moments of pain. And uh, just being a Christian does not shield you from pain. It doesn't shield you from sickness. It doesn't shield you from bad th bad things that could happen. Uh, it doesn't shield you from uh, losses. Uh, this trend that we see uh, in America and the church of these churches that... Uh, uh, a pastor saying, God, you know, Jehovah Jireh, and then he points at his Rolls Royce. The world is just, it's gone. It's The church is in huge trouble, my friends. Christ is close to coming back. When, I don't know. If anyone tells you they know when he's coming back, run, because that is a false prophet. Don't listen to them. The world sees the pages turning and there's futility and there is despair because in, they, they know that this is it. In their worldview, they close their eyes in death and then there's nothing. Um, unfortunately for them, they're going to find out that there is most certainly something. There is an afterlife and there is eternity to contend with. And we have this lifetime, very short window of time, 
some of us get 20 and 10, uh, t f uh, 3 score and 10, 60 plus 10, 70. Some of us get 4 score by reason of strength, uh, said uh, the psalmist. Moses in 90 in 91 Psalm 91 and and some of us get that and some of us don't even get close to that there's 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 we don't get that time we get a very short time and um there is um there is there is just uh uh, uh, uh we see it all the time young people dying and we all will have a last page. All of us will have a final page. And when we have a final page, when that page comes, we close our eyes. And the non-believer wakes up and is given a book in eternity, separate from God, uh, in a place called hell, separated from God for eternity. The believer is given a book also in the presence of God in the presence of Jesus and both books the non-believers book and the believers book will have no end my dear friend trust Christ if you haven't yet trust him my web page my website it's in the description below uh, and by the way that psalm was Psalm 90 Psalm 90 by reason of the three score 60 or, or or 80 years by reason of strength the psalm of moses is psalm 90. um web page go there it my website's brand new i i've there's been a complete shift in the way that i've uh, presented it it's now something much different the the web page begins with worship it's worship jesus it's all about it's all about jesus it was about jesus before but uh some of my personal some of my music and so it was all getting in the way let's get that out of the way yes i have songs that honor christ you can listen to them on every streaming platform that there is and i go ahead and listen if i hope you're blessed by it as long as you're turning all of your attention and love toward christ when you hear the songs that is my desire. But the 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 this what my new web page can be used as an evangelistic tool for my Christian friends that are watching, uh, for my believer brothers and sisters that are watching. It can be used as an evangelistic tool. You can share the web page with somebody. It's going to come up and say worship Jesus, and then it's going to give the gospel, and then some helpful resources there. There's some links to some of my songs too toward the bottom. Um, but it's about Jesus and it's about the gospel. It's about sharing the gospel. Uh, he's coming soon. When? I don't know. But he's coming soon. We look around this world is nuts. Completely nuts. And um, he's coming soon is all I can say. At least I hope he's coming soon. Um, so, my dear friend, use those tools. We've gone through a great deal of effort to make those available to all of you. Uh, we hope that you uh, are blessed by that. How should we behave when we see these pages flying by? We rejoice. Let's read it again. We rejoice continually. Rejoice always. That's, that's, that's uh, verse 16. Verse 17. Pray constantly. Pray. Verse 18. Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Be not afraid. Use the website. Use the um, um, tools that we have provided you. And I pray that you will be blessed by it and that you will um, 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 uh, hold on to him. It's the only thing that we can hold on to. Holding on to this life is quite futile. We will have our last page, and some of us sooner than others. So trust Christ. If today you hear him knocking on the door, trust him. Trust him. Open the door. Let him in and experience 
the greatest adventure you'll ever experience. May God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he grant you all joy and blessings over your house and over you personally. Peace be with you.